Hello, one and all. This is Captain Luckless, and welcome back to the Sunless Skies. We are in the center of civilization right now in London. And uh, I just wanted to read this nice story written by Joseph for all of you. It was with mixed emotions that Luckless and his crew arrived in smoky, smoggy Albion. But all aboard felt proud as London, fallen no more, drifted into view. Humanity's shining steel home in the skies. Emotions were even more mixed when the new quartermaster arrived. Luckless staggered onto the bridge in pursuit of his inconvenient aunt, who was pointing out every dent in the walls and smear of oil on the floor, with a demeanor to rival a cantankery. Gasping for breath under his aunt's bag and hat, Luckless tried to gauge the reactions and imminent intentions of his officers. The incautious driver had the same excited grin that he got whenever he was on the brink of his next suicidally dangerous stunt which did not reassure Luckless in the slightest. The fatalistic signalman appeared to be contemplating taking a sky suit, simply throwing himself out of the nearest exit, which is at least understandable. The Blemigan Voyager had scrambled up into the pipework and was hissing and waving his tentacles in a most unsettling manner. The usual reaction of any wildlife that got too close to this particular ant, and the radiant princess was positively glowing with curiosity and cheer at the prospect of a new friend Yet Luckless noticed his aunt had not even raised an eyebrow at the princess's famous aura of beauty. Luckless sighed and offered a quick prayer to whatever deities may have been listening, that whatever happened in the next few minutes would at least be over quickly. And I am super excited to get back into this and uh, to explore London properly for the first time. So let's just recap here. St. Dominic Station. London's chief station, draped in Union Jacks and studded with bronze busts of her enduring majesty. The platforms crowd with people. At the throne of ours is London's heart. This is its carotid artery. Liberated from her prison below the earth and elevated to the heavens. What can we do here again? Um, prickled with chimneys, mantled in city smog. Here are old, proud buildings, transported block by pale block to the sky. Here are new edifices of soaring steel and stone and gleaming glass. The ultimate achievement of Victorian ambition. Unhampered by terrestrial concerns, London is a feverish brew of aspiration, empire, and appetite. We can attend a meeting with a gloomy middleman. He conducts business in a smoky corner of the Admiral Benbow Inn, down in the smoggy lower levels of the city. We can wander the streets. How often does one find themselves with a spare moment in London? I want to take a look at the journal too, just to, just to keep an eye on what uh, what we might want to accomplish in this uh, in this particular episode. Captain Whitlock's legacy, so we can pursue this. Your lineage inherited a large black box from Captain Amelia Whitlock. She requested that it be delivered to an address in London, unlocked, then left there. The box contains one of the spirits of the dead, stolen from the Blue Kingdom. So we did open up the box. We could take the box to London as requested, or you could sell it and be done. So there, we got to consider that whether or not we want to sell this or deliver the uh, deliver the box. So let's keep that open. Learning about the fatalistic signalman uh, wants to visit an old friend at the London Steam and Sapphire Yard. So we're here. We could we could explore that. Incautious driver. That's back in uh, in new uh, the new Winchester area, the well to the south. Proximity uh, to Chairman's Light. This is back. Back in the reach. Last voyage? I'm not sure about this. Wander the high wilderness. Left Port Avon. We weren't quite sure where he went to. We've got the princess who wants to uh, seek something new at Perjurance, which we haven't found yet. This is all stuff at the, from the reach. It'd be nice if I could kind of like set these um, to like by region or something, just like to like partition them off or something. Smuggler's tail. Smugglers ply their secret trade in the sky. Lucrative if perilous trade. Speak to the gloomy middleman at the Admiral Benbow Inn in London to learn more about smuggling. This is something we wanted to do and there's also the uh, inconvenient aunt. She's never out of trouble. Your aunt is aboard your locomotive. So, so those are two things we discovered last time. So let's attend this meeting with a gloomy middleman just to see what uh, what he has to say. Smuggling. The middleman is nursing the same glass of beer he began the evening with. Ah, Captain. 
To claim it is a good evening would be duplicitous, but it is at least an evening, and here you are in it. He waits until you sit. My employer can open a profitable door for you. There are goods that Her Majesty's government do not want to see bought or sold. Prohibition begets scarcity. Scarcity begets profit. One example of this contraband is red honey, gathered by the Midnight Rose at Titania. We're familiar with this. Unfortunately, supplies have dried up. Prove your value, find out why, and fix the problem. This is the Midnight Rose at Titania to learn why their deliveries of red honey have slowed. That wasn't the same honey. We were collecting chorister honey, so this must be a different type of honey. All right, so we do have a mission to complete. We can wander the streets just to see what's going on. A day in London. Today, the crowds are thronging to the shops in New Regent Street. Black and gold, the Empress's own colors, are very much in fashion. Golden gowns and hats gleam in the slow, syrupy light of the distant clockwork sun. Which I'm assuming the clockwork sun is... here. Let me take a look at that later, maybe. Okay. Let's go back. The House Without Windows. To find the address given in Captain Whitlock's will, you make your way through little used streets in one of London's lower, smoggier levels. I don't really want to sell this. I think that would be... I don't know. I'm more curious about how this is going to turn out uh, rather than just selling it and making some money and being done with it. I, 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 my curiosity is piqued at this, so let's let's pursue this. To find the address given in Captain Whitlock's will, you make your way through little used streets in one of London's lower, smoggier levels. On a secluded courtyard flanked by the backs of warehouses and factories stands a tall gray house with one door and no windows. When you knock, a blind butler answers. Yes. We could deliver the black box. Fulfill Captain Whitlock's last request. Let's do it. Ah, achievement unlocked. The black box. We've got another achievement, finally. This is the third achievement out of more than 20 plus hours of gameplay. The end of the line. The butler is pleased. Ah, a resident has arrived. Please bring him in. Everything has been prepared according to Captain Whitlock's instructions. As you maneuver the black box inside, you ask what those instructions were. She has arranged for Master Jacob's convalescence with us. I understand the young gentleman has suffered from a prolonged illness, which has left him unable to speak and afflicted him with a, a delicate disposition. The affairs of the house have been organized in such a way as to never inconvenience him. He will require no visitors. An extensive library has been provided for his edification. Privacy is paramount. With the box in place, the butler produces a key from his pocket, but waits for you to leave before using it. Thank you for your assistance, Captain. If Amelia were still with us, she would thank you. Good day. You'll leave the house without windows behind. The matter of Captain Whitlock's legacy finally discharged. I wonder what else we could have done aside from just selling it. I guess we could have opened it again, maybe, and killed the thing. Killed Jacob, I guess. Interesting, interesting. Captain Whitlock's legacy. You have delivered the box and address in London as Captain Whitlock requested. We get 2,000 experience. We're really close to that next level, level 9. We gained a sky story. You no longer possess a large black box. And we gained a savage secret. Hmm. So, in Salon, the generous princess manages many affairs of court. Let's take a look at the Silken Salon. She cultivates alliances, forms opinions, sets trends, makes introductions, suggests promotions, and dismantles reputations. She attracts rumors like a lantern attracts moths. It's said that she fears the light of the suns, and that her gifts inevitably destroy the recipients. Okay. She can sometimes be found in her salon, where she welcomes visiting captains. So you can get experience for sharing a salon stewed gossip. She likes to keep abreast of affairs. So this is a way for us to trade gossip for experience. And imagine if we trade enough, we might get into her good graces. Connect the generous princess with your cryptic benefactor. Her ladyship is ever in need of new friends. The cryptic benefactor. I'm trying to remember where we got that from. 
Nod a wink. They will be there when you need them. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. 300 sovereigns and 250 experience. That seems worth it. What are these other things that are locked? Donate a ministry stamped permit. Money and experience. 70 sovereigns with the experience. Donate a royal dispensation. You're in favor with her majesty. Perhaps you'd be willing to give that influence to another. I'm going to just hang on to this because we only have one and it might come in handy later on. Just to get gold and experience might not be the best use for that. And maybe it's a way that we can get a uh, real dispensation. Um, I do have quite a few of these though, don't I? 13. Share an inordinate amount of salon seed gossip. Five. To do this. I could do this. 85 sovereigns and 50 experience. An indulgent evening. The princess sends for wine. It is a long evening in which much is shared. When you stumble out into the smog, she pats your hand. Don't worry, she tells you. I shall take all of this in hand. We lost five, 85 sovereigns with the experience. Okay. I kind of wanted just to see what would happen if we did that. Let's go back. Okay, I'll have to remember that so we can trade gossip in here. Hyron crew at St. Dominic Station. We're good. We've got 10 crew. The Office of Works. A bustling bureaucratic enigma. Let's go there. The Office of Works is a bustling bureaucratic enigma. Behind its red-bricked flanks labor numberless clerks and surveyors. What mysteries lurk within its memoranda? Its chits and its receipts. What exactly are its eponymous works? No one is sure, but in a dra uh, drafty loading bay, an unflappable foreman purchases supplies to complete outstanding work orders. Provide the foreman's requirements to earn payment. We can offer our services. We can leave. He sniffs and leafs through a dog-eared ledger. Unlocked when you do not have work orders. Okay, let's offer our services. Might as well. Gainful employment. The Office of Works, God bless her, has very particular requirements. Very particular. Let's have a look. Work orders. The Office of Work needs one caged catch and one tale of terror. I think I have those, don't I? I know I have a tale of terror. Is it in our hold? One cage. That's right. We brought that from... Um, from the reach the office okay that's the same thing provide the foreman's requirements to earn payment we can ask if there's other opportunities available if you dislike the current work order this will request a different one you can only make such requests every once every 15 days okay well we can complete this it says i suppose there's this one good old 7274-f the F stands for, well, I'll let you infer. He reads from the order, a live specimen of celestial fauna, brackets one, close brackets, must be in rude, <laughs> must be in rude health and of intemperate disposition. <laughs> so he snaps his ledger shut. Best of luck with that one. I guess that's a hint that it's a cantankery. Let's complete this. That's funny. Rude health. A ravenous delivery. A pair of laborers maneuver the catch into its new pen, their hands trembling as you recount tales of its ferocity. The foreman shakes his head. God knows what they want this one for. I stopped asking questions after someone gave me an answer. <sighs> he shudders and pays you. 350 sovereigns. You've gained 10 strength of the sun. Aha. So this is the, the thing that's going on here, right? So... In the reach, it was the fortunes, the strength of the sun. Some say the clockwork sun was brighter once, but they say it quietly and lie about it afterwards. So we can improve the strength of the sun by performing these works. I wonder if this is something that, that Luckless wants to do. I'm happy for you for you all to give me feedback in the comment section since Luckless was a bit hesitant to help out the stovepipes, which are the stovepipes, of course, are London's representation in uh, in the reach. 
Mm, I had to think about that. What's the next one? Might as well see if there's other opportunities. It's a way for us to make some money. A great imposition. Well, I don't know. I, I really don't. Orders are strictly meant to be done in priority order. Wait. Don't like bending the rules like this, I must say. Where would the Empire be? His grumbling continues, punctuated by the sharp turn of pages. Other Okay, we asked if there are other opportunities available. The Office of Works needs three barrels of unseasoned hours and a ministry stamp permit. I've got literature. I think I used my permit, didn't I? To get that. I think I have the hours in the safe. Invitation to Perjurance. Yeah, I, I don't think I have the uh, Ministry Stamped Permit. Okay, well, that's something else we can do. I have to remember to come back. And we've got that. Okay, that's, that's all there is. Let's take our leave. The foreman turns his attention to a pallet of crates destined for St. Dominic Station. Hurry it up! These have got to make the 1215. Onwards it is. Let's go to the steam and sapphire yards. Its engineers will conduct a brisk locomotive repairs for visiting captains, but their chief responsibility is the production of small but essential components used by a dozen different engine manufacturers. We can repair a locomotive. I guess we might as well. How much money do we have? 2,690. The fatalistic signalman looking up an old friend. The only address the signalman has for his friend is Shed 4 at the yards. Well, let's help him out. Uh, he will only reveal her, he will only reveal her first name, Charlotte. Unfortunately, Shed 4 is off limits, ringed with a wire fence and under the guard of a pinched watchman and his barely tamed hounds. It's kind of cool that we've uh, collected a bunch of resources because now we can use them here. Trade an otherworldly artifact for access to Shed 4. The Watchman is a hoarder with a morbid curiosity about the indigenous occupants of the High Wilderness. We can leave. The other option is ask the stalwart bookkeeper to arrange access, which would require three new street lines gratitude, which we have none of so far. Let's do the artifact. Onto the pile. The watchman coos at your gift and adds it to the incomprehensible jumble of objects crowding his shelves. It goes between a roll of crackling parchment, which he claims originated in the library of the Scribe Spinsters. Isn't that what we were... F the Scribe Spinsters. Isn't that what we were fighting against? The ones that would give us... Um, give us the... Uh, the, the wood... I believe that's what they're called. And a rubbery skull. He waves you through and the grumbling dogs watch petulantly as you uh, sidle past. Shed 4 is a huge storehouse. Beams of solemn starlight slant from grubby windows in the roof. The hulks of old locomotives rust here. From battered tugs to fat old liners, once packed with emigrating Londoners, the signalman heads off between the wrecks. Gained entry to Shed 4. We lost our artifact. The signalman stops before a stately old wreck with flaking navy blue paint. This is her. Oh, that's Charlotte. None worked harder on the Isenberg line than she did. You look at the nameplate, the Charlotte guest. Ah, uh, look how they left her, he says gloomily. That's not right. You tidy up. You put things in order. You turn the lights off and close up before you go. She deserved better than this. Leave Shed 4 for now. These are our options. We could return later. Okay, I'm glad it lets us know. Purchase the Charlotte, Charlotte Guest remains and give them to the new street line. Bronzewood, that's, that's the term I was looking for. 
She'll never fly again, but her bones and her sinews could be put to good use. The New Street Line has engines to maintain. Must be in favor with the New Street Line. We need 2,000 sovereigns. Arrange for her to be put on display in a museum. Her wood is riddled with worms. Even if you can restore her, you'll need someone with influence who uh, recommend a more lauded resting place. So we could use our cryptic benefactor for that along with three bronze wood. I'm going to think about this. We can come back and take care of this later. I assume it'll be updated in the journal, right? Let me just check here. He has been cooped up in the derelict Isenburn line signal box for a long time. Sigmund wants to visit an old friend at London Stephen Sapphire Yards. Okay, so it'll just say that. That's fine. Paramount locomotive, Macquarie's tobacco shop. The sign over the door once read Macquarie and Son, fine tobacco. But since then, someone has crossed out the word fine in a fit of honesty. It's just tobacco now. Then, on a separate, more ominous occasion, they have crossed out and Son. <laughs> just Macquarie tobacco. All right. The building is embarked on a rapid descent into squalor. The paint peels. The windows are uh, caked with grime. You can inspect the wares. Macquarie watches suspiciously as he examines shelves. Cheap tobacco, bad prices. The selection is unimpressive, as is the quality. Neither Albion nor The Reach has found a genuinely good replacement for tobacco, though. Though increasingly frantic smokers have tried lighting up virtually every example of sky flora that has been discovered. A few skyfarers mill about, examining the low grade, lower grade flavors and, this, and uh, speculating on exactly what Macquarie is cutting them with today. The more expensive brands are untouched in their glass cases. You'd wonder how this place managed to stay open if it weren't for the fact it is so obviously on the brink of closure and probably collapse. I guess that's there's nothing to do here. We can just return or inspect the wares again. Strange. Maybe we unlock some something to do here later. Shed four, we can go back. Investigate the rumors of an underground railway. You've heard of a less than legal organization operating out of the steam in Sapphire Yards. This must be this new line, maybe, that they're talking about. They pay for information and may offer work to the bold, the clever, and those willing to displease her majesty. Now we're talking. This is, this is who we want to be dealing with. Reach out through your criminal contacts. You have friends in low places. Perhaps they know something. This, oh, we need affiliation villainy too. Investigate the organization yourself. You've gathered secrets on your travels. Two of them offer clues to the Yard Gang's identity. Um, this is probably harder to get, so let's reach out through our criminal contacts. A lead. Your connections are reluctant to talk. I hear the Deniables have been sniffing about. Less known, the better. London's Deniable Constables. London's Deniable Constables. The plain clothed instruments of Her Majesty's displeasure. Our persistent superstition of the underclasses. Okay. Eventually, a dubious uh, rag and bone man directs you to one of the engine houses. Talk to the bookkeeper. He'll see you right. There we go. We've heard about the new street line. Secrets. We can chat with the bookkeeper. He offers you a cup of tea. Savagely stewed and swimming with sugar. How can we, I, I'm really curious about this. How can we be of use to the new street line? A job on the side. He is deaf, but content to communicate through sign language or messages scribbled on a pad of paper. Obliquely, he explains that he does additional work for an organization unaffiliated with the government, which has an urgent need for up-to-date reports on other parts of Albion. So this is like the port report thing. His patrons will pay for such intelligence to be brought to them rather than the ministry. What's more, he implies earning the organization's trust might open the possibility of additional work. Deliver Albion port reports to the stalwart bookkeeper to receive rewards. So we have a kind of a similar uh, dilemma going on here. Like, which side do we want to support? Did we get some port reports? I have some, but I think they're 
for Prosper. Yeah, they're all from the Reach. It has to be Albion Port Reports. Okay. Okay, okay. Ah, we can leave. We can trade Gratitude for a Savage Secret. An unlicensed chart. Win the Bookkeeper's Trust. What do we need for that? No tickets for the New Street Line. We need New Street Line Gratitude at four or more. What is this mysterious further work he once alluded to? Have you been useful enough yet that he trusts you? Trade favors for an invitation to perjurance. Bookkeeper maintains a few crisp invitations to perjurance. The debutantes there are trapped as much as those on the work worlds, but are much more reluctant to leave. Okay, well, there's, um, there's not much we can do right now, so let's depart. Back to it. He nods uh, to you and returns to his ledgers. You cross uh, the ringing engine house with its scattered workbenches. It reeks of oil and return to the arts. Ministry of Public Decency. Wait, was there more there? No, that's it. Let's go to the Ministry of Public Decency. A whitewashed building near the throne of ours, crammed with a top-hatted horde of auditors, inspectors, and correctors. The ministry curates the notion of Britishness with all the care of a, a lep, lepidopterist. Lepidopterist. Not sure what that is. Pinning a butterfly to a board. Ministry of Public Decency. A huge horseshoe shaped building of white stone, white columns, clocks, and iron gates. Where we've got the Royal or Logical Office. Tick. Let's go to the. Ministry of Public Decency. I'm not sure if this is the place for Luckless, but we'll go check it out anyways. A huge horseshoe-shaped building of white stone, white columns, clocks, and iron gates. Inside its walls are paneled with dark wood. Crimson carpets worn by frequent passage flood the floors. Within its cubbyhole offices, auditors toil to protect the sensibilities of Londoners here in the heathen sky. You can request an appointment. Is there some way you could be of use to the ministry? Might as well find out what they are looking for. Wow, there's a lot of options here. Let's start with the one we can actually select. By not having any Albion port reports. Come bearing gifts. You cross the foyer and approach the secretary ensconced at a, te at a teak desk. She listens to your request with a thoughtful frown. I'd love to arrange an appointment for you with one of our auditors. Obviously, but my hands are tied. In bureaucracy, you, you understand. She rolls her eyes, looks around conspiratorially, then lowers her voice. Best thing for someone like yourself to do is to gather reports on nearby ports. I'm sure the information office would love to hear them. Then I could pop your name in this little book. And up you go. Collect port reports from Albion and turn them in here to receive rewards. Okay, so this is our, so we come here for both options. We can turn them into the Ministry of Public Decency or the New Line. Is that what they're called? The New Line? Do we have like... I'm assuming this is going to increase the strength or decrease the strength of the sun, depending on which one we want to support. The New Street Line. Threat 5. New Street Line. You've heard about it. What else can we turn uh, this in for? Request an appointment regarding intelligence you've gathered. Albion port reports. Trade gratitude to reduce your unwanted attention. If you don't have any. Trade favor for a ministry stamp permit. Cryptic benefactor. So this is how we can get more cryptic benefactors. Invitation to perjurance again. Royal dispensation. How many do we need? 16. I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Surrender your contraband. You won't get much for it, but nor will you get arrested for possession. Interesting. There's a whole smuggling aspect in uh, Albion. Make a deal to reduce your notoriety. You've earned a few politely averted eyes. Reduce notoriety earned through smuggling. You need a royal dispensation. And we need notoriety. All right. So I don't know how much we're going to help this guy out. 
What about the Royal or Logical Office? This interests me also. I like the style. Tick, tick, tick. Albion's heartbeat. Clocks of diverse size and shape line the walls of this small gray office. Each is meticulously tuned by the Royal Orologist. The Royal Orologist. Some of the words uh, <laughs> I, I struggle with to, to pronounce uh, the first time. Tuned by the Royal Orologist and inspectors, and the second time and the third time as well, as practice for their thankless complex task of ensuring the consistency of time across her renewed majesty's territories. We could speak to the chief orologist. He sits hunched in a thick gray blanket, his crow-like stare fixed on a disassembled clock. Its gears are almost too small for the eye to see. We can look at the clock of Albion. From this side, it is polished wonder. It's a polished wonder of valves, pendulums, and cogs, working in perfect harmony. Examine the array of clocks. They all have the names of ports within: Albion and the Reach, Lustrum, uh, Brabazon, Port Prosper. Ask about the nature of hours. Use uh, their use remains poorly understood. Inquire about employment. Not just anyone can become a royal urologist. Applicant, okay. Let's speak to the chief urologist first, find out more about uh, what's going on here. One empire, one time, one date. Hmm, times change, I have heard. Well, not if I have any say in it. He reaches for a pair of tweezers, the pincers barely thicker than a human hair. The time in London must be the time in Brabazon, in Warlabury, in New Winchester, in Lustrum, to the second. It is the privilege and duty of this office to ensure that continuity. He sniffs. A task that was considerably easier before we began spending hours like shillings and sixpences. Now it might be yesterday in one place, and next week in another. It's most untidy. Kind of got a uh, piece of this in the reach. Look at the clock of Albion. A breathtaking work of engineering. Only the finest engineers were permitted to work on it. Every component is encased in polished glass. The hands, sharp enough to slice paper, slide between the exquisitely carved numerals with buttered smoothness. Only the second hand is permitted to jump from one from moment to moment, and it does so with the precision of a military march. It's just for tourists, of course, grumbles a bleary-eyed apprentice. Albion Times, uh, really based on the old TikTok man's pocket watch. Okay. He keeps us straight, except that time on his 90th birthday when he had one too many and the whole of Albion lost two hours. Examine the array of clocks. The current time is right now. Despite the vast distances involved and the complicated effects of local hour usage, all the clocks show the same time. Each of London's territories is expected to run on Albion Standard Time, but London is a long way away from them. Despite being uh, is a long way from them. Sorry. Despite being a commandment from the Empress's own lips, it is a law more often breached than observed. Ask about the nature of hours. I do want to f know more about this. Modest adjustments. The chief urologist doesn't bother to hide the weariness in his voice. No, despite the imaginative claims of certain penny dreadfuls, hours can't take you back to yesterday, nor leapfrog tomorrow. But with the use of hour looms, a week's journey can be made to take a day, or a prisoner can endure the 10 years of his sentence, while only one year passes outside his cell. A work world can perform a month's labor in a week. A lifespan can be stretched. The Empire, Captain, runs on hours. Inquire about employment. Sure. A job for serious people. The chief urologist looks surprised at your inquiry. Urologists tend to be cut from a specific cloth, a rather grayer fabric than that worn by a skyfarer. I kind of get in the impression this isn't really Luglis's thing either, but I'm curious anyways. However, you have the right to take the examination if you wish. He blows the dust off a textbook and bids you sit down. No calculation devices or writing implements were permitted. Uh-oh. Do I actually have to do math here? The chief urologist peers over the book. 
If the current time in Perjurance is exactly 1715 at the clock, and the time in Albion is 1834, what, pray tell, is the current time in Lustrum? Hurry up. I... Shouldn't it be 1834? Her time in Perjurance is exactly 715 at the clock. The time in Albion is 1834. Because the, the time should be the same place everywhere, right? What does this say? Offer the Royal or Orological Office a donation. They work so hard, perhaps this will save them time. <clears throat> time. This will buy you the answer to one question. To this one question. I'm going to go since. But isn't Perjurance. I thought Perjurance is in Albion. 1834. That is your answer. Very well, we shall continue. <laughs> What? And now a tricky one, perhaps. The chief orologist, <laughs> orologist coughs. The train from the Brabazon work world arrives at 1130 in London. The current time shown on the master Brabazon clock is, he winces, 1430. The train took exactly one hour to make the journey. It does not, of course. I merely offer this as a hypothetical for the sake of testing. What was the accurate time of its original departure from the work world? Train from the Brabazon work world of Riot. I didn't know there was going to be a test involved in this episode, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, let's think about this. 11.30 in London. Current time shown on the Master Brabazon clock is 14.30. Um, the train took exactly one hour to make the journey. What was the accurate time of its original departure? From the work world well shouldn't it be um shouldn't it be um 10 30 because the the london time is supposed to be accurate right it arrived at 11 30 and it took an hour to travel there so it should have left at 10 30. this is i pretty sure this is interesting very interesting pretty sure this is all based around you just knowing that the the time in like london is always 100% accurate. And it should be accurate everywhere else, but it becomes inaccurate, right? And it has to be corrected. You pause for a moment before writing your answer down. You wait patiently for several minutes, but the third question doesn't seem to be coming. The chief orologist's eyes have drifted closed. A thin string of drool dribbles from his otherwise dry lips as he snores. <laughs> Nudge the chief orologist. Gently, the fellow must be pushing a hundred. He actually just, he just fell asleep. He wakes with a start. Hmm, oh, excuse me. He glances at your answers. Well, you seem to have the idea. No point in going through the other 248 questions. Thank God. Um, congratulations, you are now officially a royal urologist. Apprentice third class. He pauses. Speaking of which, I have an assignment for you. Temporal inconsistency. A suitable test of your practical skills. Take this pocket watch. It is both your badge of office and your compass, pointing to the correct time. Wear it proudly. Keep it well wound. Do not get it wet. The smaller gears are quick to rust. You have an assignment at the Brabazon work world. Okay. Is that in our journal? Oh, this is completed now, Captain Whitlock's legacy, so we can close that. Time is slipping around the Empire. Your current assignment is on the Brapazon work world. Office of uh, Works is prepared to pay for raw materials. The Office of Work needs three barrels one season hours. And it's just, I'm not sure if I want to actually help them. I'll think about that one. Um, learned about your inconvenient aunt. We could talk to her. Titania. I don't know if we're going to go back to the reach right away. Okay. So nothing more to do here. I guess the one thing that we 
Brabazon work world is the one thing that we could do for sure. And talk to the ant. So that's all there is at the Ministry of Public Decency. Anything else at the station now? No. Let's go to the shops. Prospects. Okay, so we've got the Celestial Exhibit. Glass to Whirlaberry. How many slots do we have? I'm thinking I might want to just drop these because I think we're going to be spending quite a bit of time in Albion, although I know I can go back and forth. Uh, I might want to drop one of them. I only need one more for this one, so we should probably hang on to it. The Celestial Exhibit Glass to Whirlaberry. An exuberant architect at Whirlaberry Juxtamare uh, Juxta intends to construct a glass hall to house the public exhibition of curiosities. From across the heavens, he requires five panes of stained glass. Whirlaberry Juxtamare lies a long way to the east of London. And we also need glass for this too, right? Five panes of stained glass. And this is another five panes of stained So maybe I can get ten and I can complete both of those. Seems worth grabbing. Um, the Fruits of Labor, Literature for the Clockwork Sun. The Dazzled Sequencer requires five consignments of ministry-approved literature for the engineers to maintain the Clockwork Sun. To remind them of the culture that their hard work sustains. Clockwork Sun lies a long way to the southwest of London. So it's not just here. It's a long way to the southwest. Let's drop... Let's drop this one for now. Okay. The market. Let's get some more supplies. Um, it's got five. Let's just get like one and two. I don't know how long, I don't know how long I could be traveling for. Is there anything I want to sell? Actually, I should probably bank some of this stuff. I find everything's like super laggy right now. I do have one ministry approved literature already. So we'll hang on to that. One bronze wood, we could we could use that for the ship. Repair the ship. Okay. St. Dominique's augmentations. This is for upgrading our our engine if we want to. I do want to get this a saying device, but where does it go? The power slot. So that would be instead of our hold. Hmm, that's too bad. Well, I could. That really sucks. Is there another way that I can have extra space? Probably want to get another engine that has two of those slots. We could upgrade our weapons. Iron at 50 plus. Wow. What does this require? Veils at 50 plus. And what are we even at? 44 on veils. So the blue stuff is... Uh, we're close to being able to use this. Does 15 damage. That already does 15 damage, but the, the, uh, oh, and then there's blast damage too. So this is something you like shoot out and then detonate. So it does 30 damage total, I guess. Or maybe it just does 15 damage if it hits it and then it does 15 damage if there's a blast. It's not like a total of 30. It's probably just 15. 
depending on what uh it's just it just has two values because it depends on what you hit it with. Fails fifty for that too. Sophisticated machine for the sophisticated captain. Never be confounded by the wonders of the high wilderness again. I wonder if there's another way to get plus one is saying. Let's explore a bit more and uh, we'll make some decisions on this later. We're not selling anything right now. I want to check out the yards. So this is the one that we started with, the Spatchcock Reclaimed Locomotive. So we can actually trade, we could do like a side grade. And this has two slots. So we lose one armor and we have two. We could have we could put the assaying one in for this one. It's not as tough. And it doesn't have as much crew. That's probably that you know, that's probably not a bad idea. The Agravin class juggernaut. Six thousand. It has two heavy weapon slots. Or no, sorry, it just has one heavy weapon slot. Right, because these are two light weapon slots. I'm going to think about this. I might want to just uh, swap, swap it out for the trader. I want to do some exploring, though. So what's... Um, We probably want to find some of these new stations. Long way to the southwest. Long way to the east. I kind of want to go check out the Clockwork Sun. Hold on a second. What can I buy here? Nostalgic crockery. Just fuels and supplies. Let's go, um, let's start traveling to the southwest, see what we can find. Finally, we're taking off. Also, I should speak to... Equip the ante, first of all, which I always forget to do. Why is it not working? The inconvenient ant. She's taken over one of your nicer cabins, which she has ruthlessly redecorated. There's a preponderance of ugly ornaments balanced precariously on tiny tables. Hideous uh, anti macassars I don't know what that is. Uh, adorn every available surface. Your aunt occupies a felt armchair in the center of the horror, where she spends her time either knitting or solving truly mind-boggling cryptic crosswords. Converse with your uh, inconvenient aunt. I'm rather busy, she insists. Perhaps if you tell her something ghoulish, she'll pay attention to you. We have to tell her a tale of terror, okay. An evening's entertainment. Good lord, are, are you alright? She immediately bakes you a batch of scones. She doesn't even comment on the order in which you apply the jam and the cream. Wouldn't want to do that in the wrong order. I have, I have no idea how you're supposed to do that. I know what will cheer you up, she says briskly. I've been invited to a little soiree by Bunty, she pauses. An old school friend. I think she's... Uh, head of the Deniable Constables now. You'll come with me, won't you? I'll take your mind off things. She considers for a moment. I must warn you. It's a very particular evening. Old enmity is put aside. That sort of thing. It's at Carillon. Okay. Anti support locomotive. Oh, I see. We maybe could have uh, changed our terror. Lowered our terror. See what your aunt is up to. You smell of baking wafts through your locomotive. Uninvited. It emerges that your aunt is holding a tea party for those of your crew plagued with bad dreams. You're not invited. It's nothing personal, dear. They just won't feel able to speak freely if their captain can hear. They know they can always trust auntie to keep a secret. She closes the door. 
Okay. Oh, I can only do it right. I can only do it in um, when I'm in the station, right? That's why it's not equipping. There we go. A full compliment. Another achievement unlocked. Wow. Why is there an exclamation mark there? What does it say? So, did she want me to go to Carillon? Sorry, at Carillon. Okay, okay. I don't know where Brabazon Workworld is. Let's he let's head to the southwest, as we had planned to do. Also. Does the incognito princess, does she, does she tell us where perjurance is? For change, she says with a smile. After all, I'm a princess. The ambition of any princess worthy of the name, not to remain so. Hold on. Perjurance. Hmm. Okay. That's to the south of London. We get a bit of a, a bit of distance between us and London, then send out the bat. Oh, there's a light here. Ministry of Public Decency is right there. Yeah. Is this like the edge? Something. What is that? A platform. Okay, let's check that out. Why is there... Why is there an exclamation mark? What am I missing? Hmm. I don't understand. It doesn't explain what it's there for. And it, I didn't notice another symbol there. Spittlefields Market. Just like, n there's just like no fighting. Rosenbaum's Consequence. Very unsettling. I'm used to fighting stuff. Hello. Doc here. Wit and Vinegar Lumber Company. Scavenge some fuel, that's good. Okay, let's visit them. Head offices of a lumber concern that imports bronze wit from the Reach. The Wit and Vinegar Loading Dock. The Wit and Vinegar Lumber Company operates primarily in the Reach, mining bronze wood and transporting it back to London for construction, furniture, and locomotive plating. I'm assuming they're going to want some bronze wood. Uh, it's loading. Its loading platform is frequented by brawny, wide, uh, wind-bitten men lugging slabs of bronze wood into the warehouse. The workers give you unsympathetic stares. 
We're trying to work. It ain't safe for tourists. Okay. We're, we're taking off. Unwelcome. You return to your engine. Uh, you return to your engine. The workers watch as you go. Suspicious lot, aren't they? Other oh, shops. No bargains. Hmm. So either they don't trust us or there's another reason for us to go there. Southwest, I guess, once again. I think we're kind of on the edge of civilization here. It's so nice. Or something. I don't think we're allowed here, signaler mutters. Same for the likes of us. February 27th, 1906. What is this? Something's here. I'm kind of afraid. Blandford Columns. Were these ruins beautiful once, or were they always unsettling and eerie? Saying, all right, I definitely need to, to switch it up. We're kind of heading more south now. Some stuff in the background there. It's just like a ray of light. It's not a beam that's coming from anywhere. a lot of emptiness here it feels like oh shit that doesn't look friendly Madden Explorer. Turn, 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 turn. Whew. How did that miss? They got those Star Madden Explorers here also, eh? Loot the hold. Perhaps the engine was transporting something valuable. Let's get some random treasures. Faintly luminescent cage. One vision of heavens. A silver idol rests inside the cage. Four wings extend from its hunched shoulders. Made from moonstone, your navigator says in a hushed voice, to amplify the light of the stars. Okay, there's just, there's something here. We're at four and three. Um, I took one hit, yeah, so I took, I, I think I got hit by one of its shots. I mean, we're like, more than halfway to the edge, it seems like. Some more runes. Or let's say the um long way to the southwest.
the Calais Galois. I'm sure I mispronounced that one. I'm well aware. <laughs> I'm sure I mis I'm sure I mispronounced um, most of the stuff that I come across the first time. Oh, it's getting thick. A waste of glass shards, gleaming with light. A thousand pins of sunlight pricking at your eyes. Thick fog. Are we getting close to the sun? Searching of lights, the searching lights of watchtowers away in the night. What edifice stood here in times past? I now know. Okay. Um, well, frig. I feel like I should probably turn around soon. But at the same time, I feel really close to something. Oh, here we go. Sun blazes gold in your windows. Oh, my hell. Can I can I like dock here or something? This is the clockwork sign, isn't it? Azimuth. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to think about turning around. I just assumed there'd be a port here. Where is it? We're way on the edge. If I, if I don't find it over here, I'm going to have to head back. Oh, look, it's all, it's all messed up. The Sun Shattered Dome. Oh, that's it there. There's the port. I hope I can get supplies here. Oh, I got, I just leveled up. The clockwork sun. Sunspur. The dock is rarely used and its maintenance is lapsed. 
There's evidence of rust and metal strain, but only of non-crucial components. It's safe to stop for now. Once inside the dock, the sun's scouring light is diminished. Arrival at the sun. An outpost on the roaring edge of the sun, shielded from malevolent light by an eggshell of stained glass. The decommissary. We can get fuel. Wow, okay. I'd really love some supplies. We can buy stained glass. That's good to know. So I can complete um, this one, the celestial exhibit, glass to Whirlaberry, if I can find Whirlaberry. Oh, Whirlaberry Juxtamar. Okay, no, that's not the same thing. Well, I think this is probably... I'm super stressed, first of all, because I'm, I'm only on one supply. That's a long ways off to go back to get some supplies. I'll have to go straight back afterwards, and I should I definitely should have bought more supplies. Things are really far away in Albion, it appears. So the, the other station is probably, like, way over here. So I, I need to buy more supplies to get around. And we'll also um, we'll level up on the next one. Thank you all so much for joining me on this amazing journey. <laughs> it's just this game never ceases to amaze me. It's always, it's always a lot of fun uh, to play, just finding out what we're going to discover and all of the crazy stories and adventures that we go on. This is Captain Luckless signing off for now. I'll see you on the next one, and I love you all.